Hello, my name is Donna Edwards and welcome to Addiction Counselor CEU. Today we're going to be discussing managing chronic pain with adults who are in recovery from substance abuse. Chronic non-cancer pain is a common condition in the United States. CNCP is commonly defined as pain that is unassociated with an immediately terminal condition, unlikely to subside after tissue heals, therefore requiring long-term management, and not caused by identifiable tissue pathology, example given, fibromyalgia. Currently, statistics show that approximately 20% of U.S. adults experience chronic pain that lasts more than six months. Chronic pain and substance use disorder have comparable physical, social, and emotional and economic effects on health and well-being. Both conditions also have many shared neural physiologic patterns. As a result, treatments for one condition can support or conflict with treatments for the other. Specifically, medication that may be appropriate to treat CNCP may not be appropriate for patients with an SUD history. Additionally, misuse of medication for pain may contribute to addiction or threaten recovery, while unrevealed, unrelieved pain can be a trigger for substance use. Effective CNCP management in patients with or, or in recovery from SUDs must acknowledge and treat both condi conditions simultaneously. The key messages here are screening and assessments for all SUDs should be a routine part of all pain assessments. Pain management should maximize non-pharmacologic therapies and non-opiate uh, pharma pharmacotherapies before any controlled substance is prescribed. Patient education is necessary for informed consent and shared decision making and equips patients to take an active role in their treatment. Patients may jeopardize their functioning and recovery by undertaking pain treatments with opiates. Therefore, communication and education are critical for success. Screening and assessments and to support pain management in the context of SUD and recovery. Chronic pain is a multi-faucet condition requiring thorough screening and assessment that goes beyond measuring pain intensely. In addition to speaking with the patients, providers need to obtain the patient's consent to communicate with family members, pharmacists, and other health professionals to ensure a comprehensive understanding of the patient's pain, mental and emotional condition, and substance use status. Key elements of a comprehensive assessment are a physical exam, pain and coping mechanisms, family concerns, functioning related to pain and SUD if indicated, and mental health status. Co-occurring conditions and disorders including uh, physiological conditions, medical conditions, and cognitive impairments. Substance use history and risk for addiction. Family history of SUDs are very important. Medication assisted treatment history per SAMHSA, which revised the 42 CFR part two, which protects patients records created by federally assisted programs for SUD treatments and facilities coordination of care. 
other clinician notes and or medical records. Prescription monitoring program data, if available, regarding current or prior SUD treatment. Here are some commonly used screening tools for pain SUDs and co-occurring disorders. When assessing for SUDs, providers should have an open and honest conversation with patients about their substance use history and risk of cross-addiction. Providers should screen for all substances, not just opiates, because certain substances can contraindicate with prescribed medications or can affect medication tolerance. Substances that should be screened for can include alcohol, caffeine, nicotine, and illicit or illicit drugs with abuse potential, such as cannabis, depressants, hallucinogens, opiates, and stimulants. Screening and assessment should be done at the beginning of treatments as well as at regular intervals because several factors may alter the course of treatment, such as opiate tolerance, patient adherence to the recommended treatment plan, improvement or deterioration of the patient's underlying disease, condition and function, change in the patient's pain threshold, and changes in cognitive functioning and mental health. Neuropain is caused by damage or disease affecting the sensory ner nervous system. This can include compression, injury, infection, autoimmune condition, and vascular and metabolic disease. Neuropathic pain often manifests as burning or coldness, numbness, itching, or pins and needles filling at the site of pain. Once a provider identifies the patient's pain category, he or she should determine if the patient is either actively using substances or in recovery. If the patient is actively using substances, the first step is to refer the patient to an addictive treatment specialist. Next, the provider should try to identify non-opiate and possibly non-pharmacologic therapies to relieve pain. If the patient is in recovery, determine if he or she is taking medication for an SUD. If not, assess pain levels and implement non-opiate treatments and non-pharmacologic therapies. If pain does not abate, consider an op opiate treatment trial, if appropriate, and closely monitor the patient. If the patient is using agonist therapy, example like methadone or buprenorphine, continue the medication with the, with the addition of non-pharmacologic treatments and or non-opiate pharmacotherapies. If pain persists, the provider should consider dividing the current dose, increasing the dose, or both. Addition, if an opiate is angelistic, may be considered. This is most safely done in a hospital environment where the patient can be monitored for signs of opiate toxicity. Treatment is best managed with the help of a team. Depending on the patient's SUD status, the team may include any or all of the following, primary care provider, addiction specialist, pain clinician, pharmacist, psychiatric uh, psychologist or psychiatrist, physical or occupational therapist, and or family and friends with the patient's consent. Non-opiate pharmacologic therapies, a treatment plan based on pain type, SUD status, and optimal treatment team members will likely include non-opiate pharmacologic therapies. These medications are not addictive and include anti-inflammatories 
adjuvenate medications, and topical angelistics. Prescribing opiates for pain management and addiction. Treatment providers should adopt a universal precautions approach when treating patients with CNCP. In this context of pain management, this means providers should prescribe non-pharmacologic and or non-opiate therapies before considering opiate use. If pain levels necessitate opiate use, providers should evaluate the patient's SUD history and risk of relapse. Note that the history of SUDs does not always preclude to use of opiates to treat CNCP. OUD medications for chronic pain. For patients who are in SUD treatments and currently taking OUD medication, providers may consider increasing the medication dosage to manage both OUD and chronic pain. The schedule and dose of opiate agonists needed to support withdrawal from opiates to reduce cravings may be insufficient to relieve pain in patients with CNCP. A higher than usual dose of OUD medication may be required to treat chronic pain. Methadone. Patients prescribed methadone for OUD ideally should have their pain care coordinated by both a pain specialist and an SUD treatment provider. Although methadone's ability to manage craving and withdrawal symptoms can last up to 36 hours, its angelistic properties generally last for six to eight hours. Given this disparity and methadone's long half-life, extra caution, monitoring, and patient education are needed. If additional opiates are required, short-acting full agonist opiates should be added to the patient's treatment regime. Pain patients should take 10 days or more to stabilize on methadone, which means the provider must adjust the medication slowly and balance sufficient dosing with risk of overdosing. Risk with methadone include accumulation concerns, drug interactions, and QT prolongation, an EKG finding that indicates the heart is taking longer than normal to recharge between heartbeats. Primary care providers should work closely with treatment professionals to monitor these potential issues. Buprenorphine is an effective angelistic for some individuals and can benefit patients who have both SUDs and chronic pain. Its, an, its angelistic effects last six to eight hours. Buprenorphine should be given three to four times a day when used primarily for pain reduction. Naltrexone is a long-acting oral or injectable medication that blocks the effects of opiates. It is also used to reduce alcohol consumption. It is not meant for managing pain and is not a viable option for patients currently prescribed opiates. Opiate use for pain management. For patients with history of SUDs, Opiates may be considered if their use is carefully managed. Management includes selecting the appropriate opiate, dosage, titration, treatment agreements, and testing and monitoring. Opiates options. When choosing the appropriate opiate for a patient, providers should select a medication that is safe and will effectively relieve pain without increasing the risk of relapse. Choosing the correct opiate dose for patients with SUDs can be challenging. 
particularly for patients with a history of opiate use or opiate addiction. Dosage titration. A general guide for adjusting medication is to start with a low dose of opiate to ease pain, then titrate as needed to maintain pain relief without decreasing function or risking addiction or relapse. When an effective dose has been determined, total opiate dose should be increased slowly, only if needed as tolerance develops. Treatment agreements are mutually agreed on plans between the provider and the patient. The agreement outlines the course of action for treatments including non-pharmacologic treatments, non-opiate therapies, and opiate medication if indicated. The patient should be included in the planning and writing of the treatment agreement. This is not only provides a clear expectations for the patient and provider, but also preserves patient autonomy and establishes the necessary guidelines for successful treatments. A treatments agreement protects the patient's access to scheduled medications while also protecting the provider's license and prescribe those medications to prescribe those medications. Testing and monitoring are recommended for patients taking opiates for chronic pain. Patients on opiate therapy should typically meet with the provider at least once a month. However, patients with a history of SUDs may require more frequent visits. A schedule of routine visits not only helps patients see their pain as a manageable condition, but also allows the provider to closely monitor adherence. During these visits, providers should assess pain levels, monitor pill counts, note any signs of addiction or relapse, and identify unusual drug-related behavior. Urine testing is the most common way to detect prescribed and unprescribed substances, as well as verify adherence to the medication plan. Common types of urine drug tests may in mostly screens and tests that identify specific substances using gas, carmography, mass spectrography, or high performance liquid chromatography. Any unexpected results should be discussed in person with the patient. If the patient has repeated unexpected results, it would be prudent to have the patient evaluate by an addiction treatment specialist. Tapering and discontinuing opiate therapy. When pain has been resolved, a provider should gradually discontinue opiate therapy. Other reasons to stop opiate treatments for chronic pain include opiates are no longer effective, adverse effects are unmanageable, the patient does not adhere to the treatment's agreements. The patient is misusing or deviating from the medication. The reason for discontinuing opiate therapy will determine the plan for tapering off the medication. If the reason is due to non-adherence to the treatment agreement or misuse of opiates, the provider should refer the patient for addiction treatment. To protect patients from the risk of rapid tapering, providers should opt for a slow tapering process in an office setting. If withdrawal symptoms are significant, providers may prescribe medication to ease symptoms. Providers may implement or increase usage of non-opiate pain management strategies, including CBT, PT, non-opiate angelestics, and tools to manage insomnia, anxiety, or depression. Patient education is critical for informed consent and shared decision making. Informed consent is particularly important when providers are prescribing 
potentially addictive medications for patients who have a history of SUDs. Providers need to acknowledge that the patient using opiate therapy is potentially jeopardizing recovery and functioning by undertaking pain treatment. Patients who have been opiate abstinent, abstinent may not realize that they have a reduced tolerance and are at higher risk of overdose. They should be educated about such risk and provided naloxone prescriptions. Having, naloxone, having a naloxone kit on hand is a good precaution for anyone who is taking opiates. Five states, Arizona, Florida, Rhode Island, Vermont, and Virginia now mandated co-prescription of naloxone. A growing number of states have added it to the medicated form formalities or mandated that insurers cover the cost. Tailor education to each patient's individual needs and cultural identity. Use simple language. Supplement with visuals. Ask open-ended questions to promote dialogue. Ask patients to explain or demonstrate the provider's instructions to be sure the patient understands clearly the teach-back method.